I remember growing up and having a, a great childhood. Um, you know, me, my mum, my brother, my dad. Um, things are great. Um, you know, family life, home life is good. Um, I was the happiest little kid. And um, mum and dad separated when I was five. And um, I took that really hard. Um, and I think the, the, the main reason why I took it hard with the, with the circumstances surrounding that, um, me, my mum, my brother had to move in with my nan um, and my pop, that's mum's mum and dad and her brother. And um, I remember all three of us living in the same room, so we only had a room. And um, you know, early on in the peace housing was a struggle. I mean, we didn't have, you know, mum didn't have any money. She went straight onto the single parent pension. And um, you know, that issue of housing um, was probably one of the biggest ones that, you know, started the ripple effect of my life. You know, by the time we got into um, housing, um, government housing, housing commission, um, you know, I think, you know, I was, a, I was a bit troubled by that time. You know, something had changed. There'd been a shift in um, my behaviour as a kid. You know, mum did everything to give us what, whatever she could to do her best, but, you know, um, I didn't have all that stuff that, that everyone had, so I started stealing it, and um, that's what I was doing. And, you know, hanging around the people that I was hanging around, you know, that were doing the same things that I was doing, you know, stealing stuff to get stuff, and um, you know, the drugs come along with that. And I was on using hard drugs from the age of 14, um, using other drugs before that, and um, the drugs got worse, and my parents did the best they could to, to sort of help me out. You know, they would move me, I would move from my mum's to my dad's, and, um, but, you know, I was, I was already a bit troubled, and wherever I'd sort of go, I'd, I'd pick up where I left off. Um, you know, the drug addiction just got just got worse and worse, and you know, the crime got worse, and yeah, ended up in in um, jail. And um, at, I was young, 18, 19, and, um, you know, thinking, what? Well, how did I get here? I just got this random call out, out of the blue and said Jared Allison and I was like, oh, Jazz, like, hey, hey bro, how are you? And I think I was in like the middle of a meeting or something and I walked out <clears throat> and um, I'd known Jared at that point for almost nine years and I'd never heard him cry. And on this particular day, he, he, he broke down really badly and I immediately knew something was really wrong and he, you know, he just said to me, Matt, like, brother, I know if anyone can help me out of this place, it's you. And you know, he said to me, I, I don't think I'm going to live till the end of the week. It was in a really bad way. It was, uh, you know, it was, he was in, on the streets of Melbourne. And of course, this is at the end of a global pandemic where, you know, Melbourne had the strongest restrictions of any city in the world. Um, and when you're on the streets, you know, a lot of the support that you receive is from, from you know, good Samaritans walking by. A little bit different when they're all locked in their home for two years. So, you know, Jared had been through the ringer and, um, you know, he was at the end of his tether and I, I'd, I'd never heard this level of fear, pain and anxiety in his voice before ever. And uh, so as soon as he said, mate, I, I, I'm going to die this week, like, I knew that we needed to, to do everything we could to help him. I literally hung up the phone and I called Vinny straight away. I mean, obviously I've uh, done a lot of work with Vinny's over the years um, and I just knew that I could call them and count on them um, to, to support. When we made this plan, I immediately knew that a part of the success, one of, the, one of those really important ingredients would be if Jared came home each night and not just have a roof over his head, but somewhere that he's really proud of, right? That he walks into his door each night and goes, you know what, wow, this is my place. It's so important because then you can, then you can start to do all the other stuff that needs to be addressed. And there's a lot there, there's a lot of stuff 
that's going to have to be brought up. There's a lot of trauma, there's a lot of regret, there's a lot of fears and anxieties, and guilts and all those sorts of things. You're going to have to deal with them at some point, <clears throat> but before we can do any of that, you've just got to make sure that there's this safe place, safe space, and a place that you're proud of, that you can call home. I haven't met anyone over the years that's been in the spot, you know, whether they're on the street or, you know, their drugs have, have just destroyed their entire life. I haven't met anyone that doesn't want to change or doesn't want a better life or doesn't want to be out of that situation. I've never met anyone that said, you know what, I'm happy being drug addicted, homeless, feeling depressed and isolated and I've never met anyone that's that's said that they're happy with their current circumstance, you know. For someone that like me, that you know, has completely lost everything and, you know, to, to whatever, to drugs or homelessness or, or, you know, the circumstances of my life. Um, not having that safe place to sort of start fresh, start over. And, um, you know, the, the opportunity is just not there. Like, it's, it's so hard. You know, how can I expect to go and get a job? How can I turn up to work if I haven't got anywhere to live? How can I go to the gym and get healthy if I haven't got anywhere to go home and eat and shower and, you know what I mean? It's like if, if you know, without somewhere to stay, somewhere safe to stay, the, the, the rest of the opportunities just aren't there. You need somewhere to live. It's so important. There's just been so many people as a part of this story. Like, I reckon I've spoken with 10 different people at Vinnie's throughout this journey that, have, that I know have specifically and personally supported Jared on this journey. And they've all just been remarkable. Absolutely remarkable. Like, um, yeah, it, uh, it's, it almost brings me to tears. Like, just the the love and commitment by the organisation, but also by these caseworkers, has just been absolutely unbelievable. I just can't thank Vinny's enough. Vinny's does it different to a lot of the other services. They just get it right. You know, I've come out. Of Gilly's house, you know, I did four months there. They loved me back to life, um, literally. Um, you know, I was in I was in a state of depression that I've never been in in my entire life. I didn't think I was going to come out of that. I thought I was f stuffed. I thought I was gone. I thought I'm not going to come out of this. And um, you know, just that quiet encouragement. You know, just that hand on the shoulder. Just that little bit of love. You know, um, it's unbelievable. Yeah, they just get it right.